Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Prometheus University. My name is Ike Ogiamian, your usual host. And before we go into today's episode, I would like to do a public service announcement. Yes, a public service announcement by way of an apology. And for the first time in this channel, I'm breaking down the wall and showing my face because I would like to apologize for leaving this channel without content for over a year. And let's consider this, ladies and gentlemen, to be a fresh new start. I have a new system. I have streamlined a few things and I'm promising, looking directly into the camera, that now I will not leave you guys for long without content. Let's make a fresh start. I apologize deeply. Please forgive me. Now, having gotten that out of the way, let's go directly in to what we have to cover today. And today we are continuing with the series on structural dynamics, ladies and gentlemen, structural dynamics. So strongly urge you as usual to watch the first part on this series, which talked about frequency and stiffness using the basic spring model to come up with the equation relating Frequency, stiffness, and mass. Now, just a quick recap of that. First of all, we describe the way in which we model structures, the way in which we idealize structures. We described a single degree of freedom structure as this lollipop here or inverted pendulum, depending on what you would like to call it. And we say that there is one direction that this thing can move in, shown there with that arrow, left to right. That is the single degree of freedom. Okay, this thing has a mass, it has a stiffness, and you can say that the frequency, the period, okay, let's talk about the period first, the period, which is the time in seconds that it takes to go through one cycle, okay, start from the middle, go to the left, and then go to the right, right, one cycle, one cycle of motion, that time is equal to the square root of the mass times the stiffness. And we very simply, very intuitively were able to come up with that. Watch the first video. And then the frequency, which is the inverse of the period, is equal to the square root of the stiffness of the mass, of course. Now, just a brief summary of what we did in order to come up with that is on the left side, using the basic spring model, we looked at the kinematics of Oh, sorry, the kinetics, the kinetics of the spring that's having to do with mass, acceleration, forces. So the very first picture, okay, shows the spring at rest. Okay, the red spring with a mass attached on it shows the spring at rest. And then it is stretched out a distance x, and then it is vibrating left and right. It goes to negative x, it's going to come back to positive x, and it's going to go on and on indefinitely. We're talking about undamped motion in an idealized universe without any loss in energy. We came up with the equation for the dynamic equilibrium. Watch the first video. And then we looked at the kin kinematics of the situation. The kinematics does not care about mass or force. It just cares about a graphical description of the motion in question. And we said that a great graphical uh, description of the motion in question would be a trigonometric one, a cosine curve, because we're going to start with that middle picture, which is the spring is extended to position x, just like we see here, our sine curve starts at x, okay, and then it goes up and down, negative x to positive x, up and down, up and down, up and down, or back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, one degree of freedom, one dimension, one number describing the motion. Okay, and then we do the derivative of the position equation to come up with the velocity, the derivative of the velocity equation to come up with the acceleration, and then we combine the kinetic side and the kinematic side to come up with, voila, this equation that says that the frequency is equal to the square root of the stiffness divided by the mass. Okay, so watch that, and we do our typical trick intuition, graphical representation, kinematics and kinetics, combine them together and you get very powerful, useful knowledge in mechanics in general. So today's video is going to be more qualitative. And the question that faces us today is, okay, okay, Ike, okay, Prometheus University, we get it. 
we have one degree of freedom. We have a spring model. It's great. We can come up with the natural frequency, the natural period of an object, knowing its stiffness and its mass. How about something more complicated, okay? How about something more complicated? So that's when degrees of freedom comes in. Degrees of freedom are the number of independent displacements that must be specified in order to describe the motion and the position of a structure, okay? To be able to sufficiently describe, because in reality, there are infinite numbers of degrees of freedom. Every little point in the structure may be going up and down slightly, left and right, rotating in all these different directions, and on and on and on and on and on, okay? But we idealize things. We want to be sufficiently be able to describe the motion and position of a structure and the degrees of freedom and the number of independent displacements that must be specified in order to describe this. As usual, in this channel, we start with the words, okay? Modes are the form or the shape, okay? Modes are the shape of vibration that a structure can resist. A structure has the same number of modes as degrees of freedom. So, this structure that we looked at, this lollipop, upside down pendulum, has one mode because it has one degree of freedom. The mode is, it goes back and forth, back and forth. That's the shape. It has one shape. It has one shape because it has one degree of freedom. Something that has multiple degrees of freedom can resist or can perform vibrations in multiple shapes. This two things go hand in hand. And this is what we're going to elaborate upon and see what it implies for our equations, how it complicates our equations. And it doesn't really do that in any kind of complicated way, really. It just adds more equations to the ones we already derived. In other words, we have one equation, it just gets multiplied. So rather than one equation, now you have a system of linear equations which will be solved with matrix okay with the matrix the matrix is a way of solving a system of linear equations because matrices deal in vector space vectors are lines and linear equations are also lines but let's move a little step by step now let's talk about the one degree of freedom again our lollipop okay to the left we have our lollipop to the right we have what it represents structure wise which is two columns and a beam or two columns and a floor two walls and a floor or a single story building a garage something like that right so as a mass it has a stiffness likewise the roof of the garage the floor of the building has a mass and also the walls or the columns have stiffnesses we're talking about this one degree of freedom okay horizontal line drawn there and we're talking about the shape that it can take and this as we already described has one shape that it can take which is this vibration right here okay this vibration is the red lollipop going back and forth vibrating that way that is a one degree of freedom and one mode object okay moving forward then how about an object with two degrees of freedom. In other words, in order to describe this two nodes on this lollipop, we need two numbers. We need to see where mass one is going and mass two is going, right? Mass one below M1, mass two above M2. And how do can we describe this? We need two numbers, okay? We need to describe both masses, okay? So we have these stiffnesses and masses, and we said that the shapes are also equal to the degrees of freedom. So what's the first shape this thing can take? It can take this shape, whereby mass one and mass two are going in the same direction at the same time. They go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, okay? That structure, can display this shape, okay? But it can also display this shape, whereby mass one goes to the left and mass two goes to the right. So it can do this kind of dance, okay? It can do this kind of a shimmy. It can do this kind of dance. So a mode is a form or a shape of vibration that a structure can resist. And a structure 
has the same number of modes as degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom being the number of independent, okay? Independent, okay? Number of independent displacements that must be specified in order to describe the motion slash position of a structure. So let's look at the third degree of freedom or three degree of freedom and the three mode object. And with three modes, we'll begin to get the idea and then we can build up to, uh, we can at least intuit up to a higher number of modes and so on and so forth. So we have mass one, mass two, mass three, stiffness one, stiffness two, stiffness three. Okay. So again, as I mentioned before, the way in which this complicates our algebra, which we'll state down the line, is it simply adds more linear equations. We have one linear equation relating so far frequency with mass and stiffness. Now, if we continue to have these structures that are more complex that we need to describe, as they are indeed in reality, then we simply add a set of linear equations which we're going to be solving using the miracle of matrix algebra. So, the fundamentals don't change. It just becomes a question of accounting. Let me repeat that. The fundamentals do not change. It simply becomes a question of accounting using matrix algebra because matrix algebra deals with vectors. Vectors are straight lines and linear equations are also straight lines. And we'll get into a dust up on our matrix algebra skills a few parts down in this series. But let's continue with our discussion on a three degree of freedom structure. Okay, so basically, the first kind of vibration it can take, okay, the first kind of mode that it can take, and this mode will have its natural frequency, is this way, okay, everything moving together, everything moving left and right, left and right, left and right, okay. Another thing it can do, obviously, is the first two floors going one way, the third floor going the other way, okay, it can do this kind of a dance, okay. Another kind of dance that it can do is bottom floor goes to the left, middle floor goes to the right, top floor goes to the left, right? So everything can alternate and snake like this. It can do this kind of a shimmy, okay? So we can begin to understand, can we not, what we mean when we say that modes are the shapes, the kinds of dances that a particular structure can perform and that it goes hand in hand with the number of independent displacements that need to be specified in order to describe the position and motion of a structure. So modes and degrees of freedom go hand in hand. They complicate our lives in the sense that they just give us more numbers to account for, more equations to account for. But fundamentally, our vibration, the simple harmonic motion, what we came up with when we did the connect kinetics and the kinematics of a spring do not change fundamentally okay this is not going to be a long video we're not going to get too deep in the weeds with the solving of the systems of equations we'll get down to that point further this is just to put a capstone on part one part one talked about how we came up with the basic equation describing how stiffness and frequency are related you know, with mass, mass, stiffness, frequency, right? So let's bring it all together now. Top right, we have a box. It says equations. We're just going to bring in the equations that we used before, okay? And let's look at this three degree of freedom object. We're just going to say that we're going to put some numbers to the mass and units to the mass, these scary units, which are mass units as opposed to the force units, right? And we have three floors, they have three heights, it has all kinds of stiffnesses and so on and so forth. We bring our equations from the past, if you will, which says x dot, which is the first derivative of position, is the velocity, is the frequency times the displacement. Watch the first video. x double dot, the second derivative, which is the acceleration of, the second derivative of position that is, which is acceleration, is Omega squared D, which is the square of the frequency times the displacement. The force, of course, is equal to the mass times acceleration. K is equal to the square of the frequency times the mass. All these things so far, we are quite where, well, well aware of. And 
if all these are true, we can also say that the spectral acceleration is equal to the square of the frequency times the displacement, okay? And we'll talk about what spectral means down the line when we talk about the input motion and the soil dynamics, if you will, the ground motion, okay? I'm saying too much at this point, but our next video, we're going to talk about the ground motion, okay, where all this stuff starts. Because structural dynamics, a huge part of structural dynamics has to do with earthquakes, okay? Yes, there are winds, and yes, there are vibrate, vibratory motion, or there is vibratory motion coming from other sources, such as bomb blasts, and so on and so forth. But seismic activity is a huge one, and ground motion is the source of seismic vibration. And we're going to talk about that in our next video and talk about what this spectral stuff is. But basically, in the top there, we just have these equations, simple equations, which now we have a set of numbers rather than just one number. We have a set of numbers to deal with. So let's just say in a qualitative way what we do. If we put a uh, box around one of these equations, okay? We put a box around one of these equations. Let's say it's the equation that says that stiffness is equal to the square of the frequency multiplied by the mass, okay? Now, what that's going to do for this particular structure on the bottom left, the structure that has not just one mass but three masses, not just one stiffness but a number of them, and then a number of displacements that need to be described, three displacements, three masses, three stiffnesses, at least three per floor, right? So what happens then is basically you rewrite the equation in matrix form. It becomes a set of linear equations. Notice that we have a term, omega square, which we're going to change to lambda. Lambda, may, lambda is omega square. But in order to make the equation linear, okay, we can have square and cubes and stuff like that, doing weird shapes and such. We want to keep it linear, okay? Because we're talking about matrices. We want to talk Linear equations, linear equations are straight lines. Matrices deal in vector space, vectors are straight lines. And then we can use vectors to solve systems of linear equations, okay? Linear algebra, right? So basically, you now have K is equal to this lambda K matrix, okay? The K matrix is equal to the lambda matrix, which is the frequency square matrix, times the mass matrix, okay? So, just to give you an example, rather than have mass be a number, mass now is this matrix, okay? You see over here that the mass is 1.5 on the top, 3 in the middle, and 3 in the bottom, right? So, it is described by this matrix, 3, 3, and 1.5 in this 3 by 3 array right here, okay? That's how things get complicated. In other words, it becomes an accounting question. This is what I would like to impart in this video, is don't get scared because the fundamentals did not change. This is still fundamentally a model where we have something going back and forth with a stiffness, and we say that we're using a spring model to describe how the stiffness relates with the mass and the frequency. All that is still true. However, we now add more parameters, okay, more levels, more displacements, more things which need to be simultaneously specified, okay, more degrees of freedom, okay, and all that does is gives us an accounting problem, a system of linear equations which we solve with matrix algebra. I'm trying to say we should cool it, relax, don't get overwhelmed. Point is, that will be handled in a few videos down the line where we'll brush up on our linear algebra and we'll be able to take care of the rest of it. So, thank you very much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, okay? Like, subscribe, hit the bell button, and hit all. And I would like to apologize again, okay? I would like to... Let, let's uh, let's take a close-up on the camera. I would like to apologize again, ladies and gentlemen, for leaving you guys without content for over a year. I now have a good system. I've streamlined things in my life. Now I can continue to bring out videos for you guys for your enjoyment. Please leave your feedback if you thought this video was useful. And thank you very much. We are out.